Hey guys, this is Tanisha and in this video, I'm going to go over what I think a new or intermediate beginner snowboarder should invest in in the order that they should make the investment in. This is just my opinion based off of my experiences as a snowboarder. I've been snowboarding for about five or six years now and it's basically the things that I must have and if I had to do it one at a time what I would get why and when let's talk about it the first thing that I would say that you should invest in as a snowboarder if you couldn't get anything else if you had to wear jeans and trust me we see this jeans wear the coat you have or whatever else the first thing you should do invest in a good helmet this is number one. I cannot stress enough how many times I have fallen as a new snowboarder learning to snowboard. And I'm talking about hard falls. Falls where you bump your head and you see stars. But remember, you can also rent helmets when you first start, but there's nothing like having your own and there's nothing like having something that's gonna fit you. The second thing that I would invest in if I had to wear what I had, borrow clothes or whatever, I would invest in a good pair of mittens. Now I prefer mittens as, as opposed to gloves because when it's cold out and you're in mittens, your fingers, your skin to skin contact helps to generate heat. You have a little zipper so that you can take your fingers out. Cell phone, very important and all of that good stuff. So the second thing I would invest in is a good pair, a good, good, good pair of mittens or gloves. There is nothing worse than having cold hands. The next thing I would invest in, snowboard pants. The reason why, and I'm going to say snowboard or ski, snowboard pants. The reason why is because when you fall, your lower half is going to get wet. So I mean, even if you have to wear a coat, a borrowed coat or a knockoff coat or something that may not be quite weatherproof if you have a good pair of pants this is going to keep the bottom half of you dry so the third thing that i would do is buy pants in burlington start small burlington actually carries good pants for very reasonable prices as opposed to going to a ski shop or a snowboard shop socks again just like your hands you want to have warm feet so I would buy a pair of wool socks that are made specifically for cold weather for skiing and snowboarding but these are must have trust me your regular socks or your sports socks or your um, sweat socks they are not going to do they're gonna get wet really fast your feet are gonna sweat and the water is not gonna go anywhere and it's gonna make your feet even colder so invest in socks the next thing I would invest in, a coat. A coat designed for snowboarding or skiing. Um, obvious reasons why. After I have those things, the next thing I would invest in, <laughs> hand warmers. Again, when you're out on the slopes, your body is gonna generate heat just from the activity alone. But sometimes your extremities can be a little more slow to warm up or to stay warm. And I feel that you can be on a mountain as long as you want, as long as you're warm. So I would invest in hand warmers. Now, remember I said I like mittens? The reason why I love mittens is because once you have some hand warmers, we're not gonna open these, but basically they will stuff right inside of this pocket so that when they're in there, your hands can just really hold on to the warmer, you know, while you're waiting in line, waiting to get on the lift, riding the lift, oh, makes a huge difference. Is then my headband. I prefer these because as you see, they fit down nice over your ears. They're very convenient because when you have your helmet on, your helmet is going to keep your head warm. And so this pulls down to keep the rest of your exposed forehead warm as well as your ears. So this is the next thing that I would invest in and this is the thing that I use the most. Then I would buy 
one of these, the face piece. The reason, the reason why I feel like this comes before this is because sometimes it doesn't actually get cold enough to wear this guy. And then sometimes even for me when it is cold enough to wear it, I find it a little annoying because of the condensation that you're breathing, your breath and stuff would make. See like right here? After a while, all of this is wet. It can become wet. So it's kind of annoying to me. Um, but when you are in those freezing frigid temperatures, you want as much skin to be covered up as possible. And then after all of that, and some people may not agree with this order, in this order, uh, you know, you can mix it up, but I had to put it in an order, so this is what I chose. Next, I would get base wear. So this is the clothes that you're gonna put underneath your clothes. Um, you're gonna wear this underneath your snow pants. Yeah, basically that's it. You can dress in layers, so you can even afford to have on another layer over this layer, but I would at least get a nice good base layer. Then, 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 then I would invest in goggles. <laughs> right after all of that finally goggles and the reason why goggles are so low on this list is because I find in all my years of snowboarding I hardly wear these hardly 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 wear these after that now this part is a little debatable as a beginner snowboarder I believe that protective gear is very important outside of your helmet so the so the order that you get these next things in, that's totally up to you. Um, I feel that being warm is <laughs> of utmost importance. But the next thing I would, I find worthy to buy is a good wrist guard. Because you find that when you fall, especially as a snowboarder more than a skier, these are the things that end up getting kind of bent in funny ways. So I would invest in wrist guard. I would also invest, I would totally, 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 totally invest in knee pads, get some knee pads. And I have a pair somewhere. I don't know where they're at, but knee pads. And the reason why is because as a beginner snowboarder, you're gonna find that you are on your knees a lot. <laughs> in a good way, in a, in a good, wholesome way. You're on your knees a lot because again we demonstrated in the video 10 basic steps for snowboarding. I don't remember what the video is called but we demonstrated in that video a technique of getting up which has you flip over, go to your knees and get up. You're gonna find as a beginner that you're down on the ground a lot either from falling or either from just basically getting back in your gear once you get off the lift. Um, your knees can end up becoming really tender and really sore. Trust me, knee pads were a lifesaver. So I would actually move knee pads up, 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 up on the list. Where would I put them? I would put them somewhere around the base layer, around the base layer. I probably would put them, actually I'll put them on my first trip. I would go on my first lesson of snowboarding, I would have some knee pads on. And I've actually put the knee pads underneath my snowboard pants. So I don't have them on top, I have them un underneath. So make sure that you get a pair of knee pads that are um, roomy enough, not tight to cut off your circulation, so that when you put them over your tights, but underneath your snowboard pants or ski pants that they're still that they can fit that they're still comfortable and then I would also get um what's it called the tailbone protector the protective shorts they're shorts that you can usually get either in your local ski shop but you can also get them I believe that bike riding performance shops sell them as well but they are designed so that if you fall on your tailbone you don't bruise it too badly I would then invest in boots um same thing like your helmet once you realize that you're gonna be serious about this sport there's nothing like having your own boots that fit the way you want them to fit you know um, versus the rental boots so after the boots it is then time 
for the big guy your snowboard the investment of your snowboard can be super expensive because with this board you have to buy your binding separately and then i also recommend a stomp pad check out the video again 10 tips and tricks for beginning snowboarders again i don't remember what i called it and what i use my stomp pad for and then of course my bag's all dusty of course you can't have a snowboard without something to put it in so the bag i wouldn't say and my bag is dusty from my basement i wouldn't say that the bag has to be super expensive i would say to buy something though that is not super flimsy either because with your bag especially if you're going to be traveling in um like a plane your bag is going to go on luggage so you want something that can actually hold and protect your gear and because snowboarding is an expensive sport remember to protect your investment and have something to store it all in at the end of the season and during the season so i would have a backpack to put your socks your gloves your headgear and all of your extracurricular accessories throughout the year and that's all I have for you. This is Tanisha. And again, that was the tips of what I would buy as a beginner snowboarder in the order that I would buy them in. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment below so that we can have a discussion if you want. Until next time, thank you for watching.